Hello and welcome back, hope you're well. Just a quick one today. So in, in the last episode, I tested out my standard zoom to see how it performed at different settings and you know, hopefully this is gonna help me get the sharpest images possible next time I'm out shooting some landscapes. During that video, one of the tests that I did was to see how having optical image stabilization turned off and turned on when it was locked down on a tripod made any difference to the image quality. So I've heard from multiple sources over the years that leaving your optical image stabilization turned on when having the camera locked down on the tripod will produce softer images. Now, personally, I've never seen any evidence of this, but I must point out that I've never really properly tested it either. The one test that I did last week at f11, third of a second, showed no difference whatsoever between the two images, but I'd never tried this at longer shutter speeds. Now, after reading several comments after last week's video, folk were saying that they had noticed significant image degradation, especially with long exposures. So, because I'm quite forgetful as well and always leave my image stabilization turned on, I thought it was high time that I did a few tests of my own and really got to the bottom of this. So, I'm trying to mimic exactly how I shoot in the field, but obviously for a sharpness test, doing it outside is very, very difficult because everything's windy and moving around especially when we're doing long exposures. So it's better to do these type of tests actually inside where I can control everything. I've got the light here set up, at this little setup here with a few different items on, as you can see. And essentially what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm at F11, focus on the book, I'm at half a second. Now that's a shutter speed that's pretty typical, I would say, when I'm out shooting in the woodland or a misty morning or something like that. Around about that shutter speed is about, you know, I would say, you know, fairly normal. Uh, anyway, I've got three different filters that I can put on to lengthen my shutter speed to increase my exposure time. I've got a three stop, a six stop, and a 10 stop. So by placing them on the front of the lens, I can increase my exposure. So it'd be really interesting to see if it makes any difference when we get into the longer exposures, whether there's any difference in sharpness with the image stabilization turned on and turned off. So let's get cracking with the tests and get back to the computer and take a look at the results. So in case you're wondering why I've got my hat on indoors, it is to hide my awful lockdown hair, uh, which is just growing an inch a day, I think. Um, but hopefully I'll be getting it cut in about four weeks time. So. But anyway, we're in Lightroom now. I've got everything loaded up. We're gonna take a look at these images and the comparisons and uh, really you know, try to get to the bottom of it. I've done a, quite a few different tests here, different lenses, different cameras, different shutter speeds, different you know, exposure times. So let's dive into Lightroom and take a look. Here we have it, the first image here is half a second F11. Now on all of these images that I've got here, the first one was with the image stabilization turned on and the second one was with it off. So I'm always gonna put the one where it's turned off on the right hand side, just so you know. So let's, uh, let's zoom into this image here in this old Polaroid camera. And uh, as you can see, I'm not gonna spend ages on this guys, but as you can see, these two images are identical. So let's take a look at the next one. Again, so this is at four seconds. And as you can see, you know, the, the images is exactly the same. Can't see any difference over here on this leaf. Both images are pin sharp at four seconds. This one is now at 30 seconds, as you can see. Again, 30 second exposure. Both of these images are identical. There's nothing to, uh, Nothing to tell the two images apart, absolutely the same. Everywhere I've looked, I've looked over these images in, in fine detail, guys, but obviously, and I want to keep this video nice and short, um, but yeah, both images exactly the same. Let's throw this next one up. This is at eight minutes, so getting a bit longer with the exposure time. So I started to think that maybe now I would start to see some significant uh, degradation in terms of the image quality 
with the one that's got the image stabilization turned on. So the image stabilization turned on is on the left hand side and this one is on the right hand side. And again, I still can't see any difference in the image quality. Uh, they both look pretty much identical. So this next one, I wanted to change the lens because uh, all of those were took with my standard zoom lens, my 18 to 55. And I wanted to swap that up and put on my telephoto lens. So with this one, I've got my 50 to 140 millimeter f2.8 lens on and I'm zoomed in at about 87 millimeters here. Um, nice and close. One on the left, image stabilization is turned on. And the one on the right, image stabilization is turned off. And again, we can see that they're both exactly the same. Again, this is eight minutes. This is an eight minute exposure. Quite a long exposure time. So again, this next one, I wanted to change my lens again. I thought, well, I'll put my wide le uh, lens on this time. I'll try it with the wide lens. But I'd also change my camera as well, because all of these previously were taken with the Fuji X-T3. And I thought, well, I'll try it with my X-H1. And that has got IBIS, that's got in-body image stabilization. So here we've got two different types of stabilization working together. We've got the in-body stabilization, where the sensor is moving within the camera. And we've also got the optical image stabilization, which is the lens stabilization. So. Again, locked down on the top tripod, and I should say all of these shots I was using the 10 second timer, and as soon as I pressed the timer, I exited the room to make sure there was no, you know, I wasn't endangering the camera being moved in any way. I've got a wooden floor here, I don't want any kind of movement in the floor, I want it to be as controlled as possible. So there was no camera shake. All also focused in the same place in the front of this lens for all of these images. So let's take a look at this one then. So again, eight minute, eight minute exposure, f11, IBIS and image stabilization. Two images are identical. I was going to end the test here, but I thought actually no, I've got to go for a super, super long exposure. So I thought Let's try a 15 minute exposure just to finish off the test. So here we go with the 15 minute exposure. Now, I figured I'm probably never going to do anything longer than a 15 minute exposure. <laughs> I know some people do go longer than that, but I can't ever see me doing that personally. Um, so let's have a quick look at this. It's pretty conclusive, I think. I think it's fair to say that the images are identical. And I saw from my tests, no difference whatsoever. Now, I'd just like to say before I conclude that with these, one of the problems with YouTube is that somebody will make a video, for example, and that video will get a lot of views. And what tends to happen is other people see that video, see it doing quite well, and they tend to use that content to make their own version of that video. Um, and obviously then, if that gets put out multiple, multiple times, it's almost taken for gospel, isn't it? Um, everybody starts believing it because they've seen it so many times. What I try to do here on this channel is do my own experiments and share my own experiments and my own conclusions with you. I do think that is the proper way of putting this sort of content out. If you, uh, if you look at other people's content and just, you know, copycat it, essentially, you know, you could be giving the wrong information out. Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna be the same for everybody. Um, it is with my gear here. These are the conclusions that I've drawn. So, there you have it. So, my conclusion after testing on two different cameras, one with IBIS and one without, and three different lenses, is that I could see no difference in image quality through any of the images. Now, of course, this is a controlled environment and it is possible that, say, microshake from wind, for example, could uh, move the stabilization within your lens and produce a softer image. But I'd also suggest that this also could be the case if you had it turned off as well, especially if you're using a telephoto lens, for example. Now, so many people can't be wrong and my tests only conclude that with my gear, there's no difference. So I would strongly recommend that you carry out your own tests you know, like I've done here and see whether your gear performs as mine did or you experience some softness within your images. 
I would love to know, so please let me know in the comments. I really do want to know your results. I'm really, really keen to get to the bottom of this. So I hope you got something from this short vid. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. That really helps me out. And a big thanks to everybody that supports what I do here, whether that be by being a member of my photography club or continue to like, share and watch these videos. Your support is much appreciated, guys. Until next week, take care and I'll see you soon.